A strong day, be your best every day. Hi, I'm Ademus, founder and director of Strong Optimizer. I aim to help you stay healthy, be happier, and deal with challenges with greater resilience. Have you ever wondered what makes life worth living? What do you do when you go through trials and challenges? And how do you flourish through suffering? Today, you will meet Dr. Paul Wong from Canada. Paul will share his decades of research and wisdom to help you find meaning and flourish through suffering. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ademus, founder and director of Strong Optimizer. Thank you for watching Strong Optimizer's The Size Up Your Wellbeing series. Today, we have Dr. Paul Wong joining us all the way from Toronto, Canada. And mm -hmm. Paul is a professor emeritus of Trent University. He is a fellow of APA and CPA and president of the International Network on Positive Meaning and the Meaning Center Counseling Institute. Besides being the editor of the International Journal of Existential Positive Psychology, he's also edited two influential volumes on the human quest for meaning. Paul is a prolific writer and one of the most cited existentialist and positive psychologists. But personally, what is most remarkable for me is Paul's wisdom, humility, resilience, and steadfast faith in God, which enable him to live fully and productively with abiding joy, despite his um, physical and mental struggles with all kinds of pains, hardships, and obstacles. And at the age of 24, I mean, no, at the age of 84, <laughs> Paul has worked more than eight hours per day, not because he has to, but because he wants to. He simply loves every minute of it. And he continues to help influence and impart his wisdom to countless of people in finding meaning through their pains, trials, and sufferings. I'm so honored and grateful to have you today, Paul. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. It's my pleasure to be on your program to talk with a fellow believer. Amen. <laughs> and uh, thank you also for taking the time today to specifically look into you know, how we can actually flourish through suffering. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just interested to find out that, Paul, you have been working as an academia, a researcher, and practicing psychology, specializing in existential positive psychology and meaning-centered counseling and therapy for many decades. So what are some of your primary philosophies or beliefs that actually govern and guide your work? Okay. So I was born in China. So as a child, I was nourished by the traditional Chinese culture of Confucianism, Confucianism, mm. Taoism, and Buddhism. Mm. So I learned some very important lessons yeah. of life. I learned that we have learned to endure suffering mm. because life is both suffering. And secondly, we also learn to do hard work, to excel mm. in our in learning, in our job. Thirdly, we learn to be courteous yeah. and kind to people. So these three lessons have uh, helped me a great deal all through my life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of these so-called uh, traditional virtue of values from the Chinese culture has so-called embedded into not only what you do, but to an extent who you are as well, of acknowledging and accepting that suffering and hardship is inevitable and part of life. So rather than trying to, I guess, that uh, run away from them, it's almost as like giving you this mindset that, hey, it's okay to embrace that because yes, pain is painful, but pain a lot of time also can have meanings and purpose and you know, it may be. Yeah, more than that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we learned that uh, if you want to, if you, without suffering, you're not even qualified as a mature human being. Mm. More importantly, we, we learned that you, you, if you want to be, to be the top, to, ex, to be top, you'll suffer more than anybody else. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because, so the 
Try to make the Grandson Right. Yeah. <laughs> Men else to be, to be, you know, to, to be mm -hmm. ahead of other people. So yeah. self is, 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 is always understood as, as a teacher, as a friend, not something to be run away from. Mm, 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 mm. I, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that Chinese proper Chinese phrase. I'm just going to repeat that again for our listeners. It's called 吃得苦中苦,方为人上人. Uh, the direct translation means that you're able to endure all kinds of hardships that is actually become a foundation or so even a prerequisite for you to excel as human beings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Um, so we understand that one of the tenets of positive psychology is to figure out these questions. What makes life worth living? So for you, Paul, what makes life worth living? Okay. So this is a, a both a complicated question and a simple question, okay? Mm. The simple question is that what life to be worth living means you embrace life in totality, you make the best use of your time on earth to serve mm -hmm. others and to glorify God. So I become a Christian uh, as a, uh, I employed a high school graduate. So in my desperation, I cry out to God. Yeah. Uh, so I discovered that it, it, it's, it's hard to live a meaningful life without mm -hmm. a vertical connection yeah. with the, the creator, with the transcendental God. So a meaningful life, part of a meaningful life mm -hmm. is to not only to serve others, but to be connected with our great creator, yeah. to glorify God. So that is a, that's a spiritual dimension, it's very part of a meaningful life. Mm. So, so another important dimension is to get to know our true, true self, deep yeah. down, who we really are, is to become who we are meant to be. Yeah. So I was meant to be a, a, a psychologist. Yeah. So my ministry is to help people to bring meaning and happiness to yeah. suffering people through the practice of psychology. Mm. So if I want to be a painter or musician, which I try to be, I fail because that's not my calling. Mm. So mm. To, to live a meaningful life, you have to, you have to be what you're meant to be, to, to, to be connected with your true calling. Yeah. To meet your life, you have to use a gift to serve others, yeah. to bring some, uh, value to other people's lives. Mm -hmm. and, and more importantly, you have to be connected with, with the creator, the source of all life, the yeah. source of all blessing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's three way, inwardly yep. and outwardly and upwardly. Wow. So in other words, you're talking about is having this uh, inward, uh, horizontal and vertical relationships. Um, inwardly, you use this word calling, you know, which sometimes for a lot of people, it is a heavy uh, or, or big word. Because when, even when I mention the word calling, sometimes people may think that it's something that I have to endure. You know, it's not really my, my, my shapes or my strengths. But you talk mm -hmm. about figuring out why on, you know, why on earth, or what is the point that I'm actually living on this planet Earth? And that is to, of course, mm -hmm. to utilize once again the skill, the resources that God has given to all of us not as a self-centered kind of ambitions, but to serve yeah. others. You also use the word ministry, which may not be necessarily be common, you know, in the, I guess that the, 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 the modern world, but yet it is a platform for us to continue to serve others. So it's something that's bigger than us, beyond than us. Yeah, that's right. Exactly right. Wow. Wonderful. All right. We also understand that, uh, Paul, you are one of the founding fathers of existential positive psychology. So in a nutshell, what is existential positive psychology and how does it differ from positive psychology? Okay. See, most people do not understand the difference. Okay. Mm. It is very different. It yeah. asks a very different set of questions. For example, 
as an existential part of psychologist, mm. I will ask the question, how can one be happy while living in pain? Ah. Okay. okay. So the part of psychology is about hiding happiness. But now I'm asking the question, how can I find happiness when I'm suffering in pain, in poverty, uh, how? Mm. Another way to ask is that, instead of asking what's right, what's good and right about us, mm. so we ask what is right and good of us in a world full of suffering and evil, mm. in a situation when we ourselves have the capacity for evil, yeah. when we often inflict pain to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So how can we be right and good while fighting this civil war within us? Yeah. The flesh, the flesh fight against mm -hmm. the spirit. Mm -hmm. The flesh do things the spirit doesn't want to do. So we like Apostle Paul, we all go through yeah. this inner struggle. So you cannot just ask what's right and good about without recognizing that we have to deal with our inner demons, mm. we deal with our capacity for evil, we deal with a world full of suffering. Yeah. It's in that context, how can we be good and right? So that's a very different question. It's a much mm. higher bar. It, it's, it's meeting people where they are. Yeah. It's asking people to face the reality that we are not living in Disneyland. Mm. We're living in the real world. Yeah. There was all kinds of troubles. Just, just turn on TV. All you hear is crime, war, you know, all kinds of troubles. We can't yeah. pretend it doesn't happen. We're going to pretend all the problems don't happen. Mm -hmm. Your marriages, and all my clients, all my clients, I mean, how successful they are. Mm. They all have problems in their marriages, in their career. Yeah. So, example, I call it say, Given the reality of suffering, mm. how can we find meaning and happiness? Yeah. How, can we, how can we be our, be our best self, our real yeah. best self, not a not a dream, you know, the illusionary best self? Yeah. How can we be our best self, incorporating our dark shadow, our failures, mm. our brokenness, our need for redemption, for healing? The birth. Mm -hmm. So it is extended part psychology asks much, much tougher questions. Yeah. And, and meet people where they are, not 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 you know in an ideal situation of uh, when life is neutral or life is positive. Yeah. You meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. So you try to help people, even in the deepest hell, we are saying, you know, your, your deepest hell might be a pathway to heaven. Mm. Often, our hell bring us awareness of a need for God. Oh, oh, my, my, in my desperation, I get to know God. Many people in their desperation, no matter, no, there are no other sources of help. Mm. They cry out to God. Yes. For, for example, William James, he suffered from depression and anxiety. He, he, he talked about this sick soul. The soul is sick. He, he finally, in his desperation, he said, I believe, I see if God exists. I believe that meaning in life. Mm. The power of belief enabled him to, to experience rebirth. Mm. I enabled him to overcome his, his sickness, his, yeah. his, his mental health problem. Yeah. So all of us, can benefit from God's help. So that is something that I, desper I desperately want people to hear that. Mm. God is very near and God is our help. Yeah. We have to humble ourselves and, and by leap of faith, reach out to God for help. Mm. God can meet us where we are. And so, uh, that's why as a center part psychology is a, a very spiritual way 
yeah. of looking at things. And also a very optimistic way of looking at things. We realize how life, how hard life is and how much people suffer. And yet we say, fear not, mm. let's hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that you know, even as, as you're talking about transcendence, spirituality, connection with God, I'm sure that uh, you know, some of our listeners out there, uh, it may trigger some reactions because again, everyone seems to have deep understandings of who is God, you know, whether it's a small G God or the big G God. And we're going to address this question later on because a lot of times, uh, sometimes within the realm of physical science or even psychological science, the researchers may not be very comfortable of uh, mixing God you know, and science or religion and science together because they think that it, it, they're incompatible. We're going to talk about it later. But you know, part of the tenets, again, of existential positive psychology is acknowledge the brokenness of humanity and the brokenness of the world and how we can to have that happiness or slash joy in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering. And I like the way you talk about we are actually meeting people of where they are at, not just an ideal kind of fantasy Disneyland. land that if I'm not happy today, there's something wrong with me. But because, you know, I, I, I'm unemployed or have some sort of marital issues, but to you, existential psychology, positive psychology address a much deeper uh, I guess that human needs or human condition, which at a spiritual level, which we often don't hear, we talk about within the psychological science area. Okay. Now, then I can give an example, okay? Yeah. Now, Jesus is called the man of sorrow. Mm. You know, sorrow. He, 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 his heart is full of sorrow because when you look at the people, look at the people, his heart was full of compassion because people are gone astray, mm-hmm. like sheep is a shepherd. So anyone who have a, who have a kind heart, when you look at the world condition, it, you have to feel sad. Mm-hmm. Look at the, the, the refugee crisis and people starving to death and the human trafficking and the kidnapped women and children. And, all the horrible things around, around us. Mm. So everyone who has a brain, who is capable of thinking, or who have empathy and compassion, will feel sad. Mm. But, but it's called, but I call that sweet, sweet sorrow. Yeah. Sweet sorrow means that uh, it is the, the sorrow that brings us close to God. It's sorrow that bring us close to other people. It's sorrow that, that make us be kind to each other, make us a better people, make us try to make this world a better world. So sorrow is not a bad emotion. Mm. Sorrow and deep joy can coexist. Yeah. So, so I mean, is it is is it is simple, cool, simplistic? Too simple minded to say, oh, I want to have happiness. But happiness is not always just excitement. Mm. Most people, most research shown that people want calmness, want inner peace. Yeah. Inner peace is between excitement and depression. Inner peace is in between. All right. So, so we can have happiness that is based on calmness. Mm-hmm. Based on equanimity, based on contentment, yeah. and based on acceptance, and based on at peace with ourselves, at peace with the world, at peace with God, mm-hmm. the inner peace. Yeah. So inner peace is, is amazing. Yeah. So it's much more resistant to disruption, uh, to, to trauma. Inner peace. You have been a peace in the midst of a storm. You have been a peace when the troubles are around you. Yeah. yeah. I still I sense in the peace that God is with me. Mm-hmm. Or I, I, your life, my life is, is not in my hand, it's beyond my control. Yeah. I only control what is within my sphere of capability. 
with it. So many things beyond my control, I surrender to it to fate, surrender to God. So I don't worry about it. Mm. So at a deeper level, I want existential past psychology try to help people to live at a deeper level, a deeper level of ex- accept- accepting that sorrow and happiness are two sides of the same coin. Mm-hmm. Life and death, likewise, are uh, in young on the same side of the coin. So true happiness is completeness, wholeness, not just happiness. True happiness had to incorporate the dark side of life. So then you have wholeness, the yin yang is simple. Yeah. You have the wholeness, then you're more able to experience inner peace because now you have darkness, dark side and bright side coexist in peace, in a dynamic balance. So existential psychology is about the dynamic balance to navigate between polarities, between opposites, try to navigate a, a, a adaptive balance. Yeah. It is able to uh, uh, maintain the middle way, the middle way, and uh, not extreme either one. When you go to extreme, you be also emotional, emotional up and down. Yeah. When you put the middle way, then you're more likely to experience a deeper peace, like deep water, a like deep peace. Mm. Uh, so, so emotion come and go, yes. but emotion is not completely in our control, but, but we're able to maintain control by some regulation of emotion, but not pay much attention to negative emotion. They are, they, they are normal, they come and go. Mm. The negative emotion simply, so whenever I'm afraid of something, I turn to God. So that, on one hand, I say, so all, my, all the negative things that affect me are transformed to positive. So therefore, I'm undefeatable. I'm undefeatable. <laughs> but then I made a quite, quite bad thing is telling me, right away, I, I accept it. And by faith, so yeah. meaning I transform me into positive energy, positive motivation, and, and into, into a lesson, into wisdom. Mm-hmm. So not, nothing can, so I'm, I'm undefeatable, not because I'm a superman, mm-hmm. but because I've learned how to, like I was going, how to, I teach my clients the same thing. Yeah. How to transform the bad stuff in their life into good stuff, into blessing. It's a strength in yeah. flourishing. That's why I say you can't, you cannot really flourish without know, knowing how to accept facing your suffering, mm. how to transform your suffering, how to rise above your suffering. Yeah. You cannot manage your, your suffering. You can't be happy. That's, you forget where you see. <laughs> You see, on paper, oh, I'm happy, you're happy. But deep down, you're still fighting all the time. At home, fighting with your wife, fighting with your children. At work, fighting with your colleague. Fight, 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 always fight. Mm. You talk about happiness, but, but in reality, your life is spent in fighting with people, fighting within yourself. So a more realistic way about happiness is calmness. A comment based on acceptance, based on contentment, based on recognizing that in life nothing is permanent. Mm. We're going to make the best of every day, make the best of every minute, meaning make the best of the present, learn from the past, and moving towards the right direction. Then life is happy. Wow, so much <laughs> nuggets of wisdom. Just in depth, you know, five minutes of your explanations. Um, I guess what what I'm taking away is that this sense of inner peace, uh, is almost like an anchoring force 
in the midst of storms, in the midst of the chaotic external circumstances. Just as you mentioned earlier, Paul, our emotions, like whether it comes and goes, or just that happiness comes and goes a lot of time, may subject to external circumstances or people that we think that's going to um, bring happiness in our life. But you talk about existential positive psychology, once again, is to acknowledge that um, sorrow or pain, happiness can coexist because of this anchoring force in connection once again to God, spirituality, um, understanding that uh, uh, there, there's always going to be this, um, I guess, a uh, pulling forces uh, between, for the better word, again, happiness and, and pain and suffering. Once again, just to embrace it together. And you also talk about this whole position of surrendering in terms of acknowledging what is yes within my sphere of influence but a lot of things are actually outside of my control and part of I guess the sorrow is people trying to control things that are beyond their control surrender 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 yes yes that's right that's right wonderful wonderful um early on you talked a little bit more about um flourishing through suffering so can you just elaborate and pack for us a little bit more in terms of uh, how can we actually achieve well-being and flourishing in terms of um, suffering? Uh, for example, especially, you know, how can someone find meaning or, or this inner peace through senseless losses such as um, you know, violent deaths or suicide or death of a child or war, even poverty? Okay, okay. So the worst could happen to us is death, okay? Mm. okay. And loss. We, we, aging actually is a process of losses. The older you get, like right, my age, I lose my friends every week, okay? Mm. So life is a series of losses. So the, the first step, so I teach my clients is accept life, accept reality as it is. Not as the way I, not accept life as the way I expect it to be or I wish it to be, but really face reality and accept it is. You know why? Most of the suffering, as Buddha said, come from our refusal to accept reality. Most of the suffering come from our refusal to accept reality, trying to run away from reality, trying to escape from reality. Anxiety, depression, whatever. All related to a church away, run away, but we cannot escape from ourselves. You read a problem. We are moved to Australia <laughs> or New Zealand or even Hawaii. You can move to anywhere. You can change job, change a uh, marriage partner. It, what it, it, the problem is your unit is within you. You can't escape from yourself. Mm. It's futile. It's futile. And also, you cannot escape from this world. This planet Earth is beautiful, but it's also a lot of dangerous. In Japan, they always worry about the whole city sinking below the sea level. In Indonesia, also people worry about tsunami, earthquake. Mm -hmm. And right now we worry about pandemic. Yeah. This world is a dangerous world. It's beautiful, yes. But also, for danger, mm. earthquake, flood, drought. So, therefore, the first lesson is that suffering is inescapable. Most suffering is inescapable. So, it's no point to escape to the world. Why don't you accept it? Mm. The moment you accept it, the tiger loses its teeth. Mm. One thing of ground, and face the tiger, the tiger surprise. The tiger yeah. will, 
with, with his power. So once we accept what we fear, the moment we accept our fear, whatever we are afraid of, lose its power. Mm. And, and more important than that, we not only accept it, we try to come to, come to, come to into terms to coexist, to learn from it. Right? So, so the first step is accept. Yeah, acceptance. The, 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 the second part is belief. We have A, B, C now. A is accept. Okay. B is belief. Wow. The power of belief. That is the most powerful thing we are capable of. It's not risk, not rational thinking. Mm-hmm. It's not. Uh, it's not some common things, no. but the power of belief. Belief can make all things possible. Mm. You know, what you believe, believe that we can respond to life the right way. The right way. What will happen? The right way, the wrong way. The right way make us better, the wrong way make us bitter. So anything happen to us, either make us bitter or make us better. So the right way make us better. What is the right way? The right way is you ask yourself, what is the right thing to do? What's the meaning of a situation? The wrong way is do what you expedient. That is what is right. The wrong way is do something that let out your emotion, let out on people, you know, hurting people for other people. Put your pain inside you, you lash out on your dog, your <laughs> wife, your children. That's the wrong way. The wrong way is to let out your top, throw your top, and, and strike out or, or fight or fight. That is the primitive way of coping. Mm. And the, the civilized way of coping, because the problem is not an animal now. The, 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 our enemy is much more sophisticated, <laughs> much more abstract. Okay? There are the online uh, viruses and the ransomware, all kinds of malicious ware. Mm. So our, our enemies are much sophisticated. So believe that I can respond the right way by consulting our conscience, by consulting our best judgment, by consulting God, by consulting the wise people, smarter than we are. So if we do the right thing, not, yeah, in every situation, eventually, things will turn out all right. Not only believe that we can do the right thing in specific situations, but also believe that we're heading in the right direction of glorifying God and serving other people and also care for our true self. So our direction is the right direction. So not only in, in each situation, but over, over overall direction. I believe that my life is on the right track. Mm. I believe that I'm not wasting my time. I'm not going around in circles. I'm full of guidance, full of my calling, to glorify him, to serve, my, to serve humanity, and also to develop my potential so that I can give my best gift to humanity. So if I know I'm in the right gift, uh, kind of the right direction, then I don't worry. Because like, yeah, I'm doing my best, it's kind of like that. So it'd be, now C now is it, it's crucial now. C means I don't want to believe, believe that in your head. Okay? Yeah. I actually commit myself to do the right thing. All right. It's, Commit myself to do the right thing. Commit myself to, to follow my calling, not to be, not to be tempted, 
not to take shortcut mm. and not to be run away from my duty. I'll have the courage to follow my calling to do the right thing. So you have to do ABC, you know, yeah. accept that it is, believe I can respond to life in the right way, and I commit myself, commit my future, commit all my, commit all my power, all my, all my heart, my mind, and my soul to, to follow God's will or to yeah. do the right thing. Then I'm pretty, feel pretty safe. So that means that in whatever situation, that means how bad I have gone through a horrible situation. I discovered accepting all the bad stuff. You actually feel liberated. You feel liberated. Not going to mind the words that kill me. Oh, yeah, make my day. That is much better. So with the death problem is solved. To die, Paul said, to live is cry, to die is, is, is better. So to live is gain, and to, to die is gain, right? Eh? Yeah. That's gain. So, oh, make my day, come on. Mm-hmm. Make my day. So once you're no longer afraid of death, then you're fearless. You don't want to anything. When you're fearless, your anxiety is gone. You're pure, oh, what about this, what about that? all those peanut little things? They keep sweating off. Wasting all the precious, wasting their precious life, wasting their precious time. We're about the kind of those things. Mm. Most of the stuff they worry never never come true. It never happens. Yeah. So what, what waste your time? What waste your time? To, to spend time enjoying your life, improve yourself. You improve yourself every day. Mm. Then, then, you get stronger and stronger and better and better. So I'm still Eight. learning. Yeah. So I'm, I'm 84. I'm still work learning things every day. Still, I, I look much young, younger and much happier, but I, I pain and ache all day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So certainly you are the living example of... Um, Embracing both the sorrow, the pain, but also the abiding joy, understanding that you know God is the source of your strength and your help, and He's our you know, the Bible said He's our ever present help in times of need. Ever presence helps in times of need. Uh, I guess that you know when we talk about pain and suffering and, and God, sometimes these very ancient old questions that people sort of um, presents that again, you know, if there is God, why doesn't he do something about it, about the world suffering? And how would you respond to that, Paul? Okay. Now, this, is a, this is something that, that uh, you ask me, uh, okay, not you, if you ask me, uh, if it's God, why is suffering? That's the main reason, that's why I can believe in God. Okay? Mm-hmm. I said, to you, why? You know why you're suffering? Precisely because you don't recognize God. That's why you suffer. Mm. If you recognize that you are mortals, you're not God. There is a forbidden tree for everybody's life. There's boundary. You will ignore the forbidden, forbidden tree. You pre God, try to be less smart as God. Then all the suffering because people no longer fear God. Mm-hmm. Are you, are, if God doesn't exist, they think they can get away with it. They think they can get away with the murder, they can get away with, with bullying other people, they can get away from oppressing other people. But God is watching. There will be accountability. Killer cannot get away. Stalin cannot get away. Most of them cannot get away. Nobody can get away. Finally, there is ultimate justice. So, if you do not have God, like Voltaire said, then we have a great God. Because if we do not have no one to fear, we're in trouble. We, well, we, the world will be chaos. Yeah. If there's no God, no fear of God, 
più, più qualcosa di, 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 di power, money, che non chiede per anything. This world will be never at peace. We're always fighting each other. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's trying to play God. The big country, the poorly small country, and China is trying to invade Taiwan, trying to invade Hong Kong, and Singapore, and anywhere, anywhere. They think that you're going to pick them, them to anybody. You know, Japan before was the thing, but China caused mm. so much suffering. They do fear God. So, so the first point, if you don't believe in God, then you'll be in trouble. Second, the worst form of suffering because they don't believe in God. Secondly, oh, I can't see God's direction. You know, the world is so huge beyond your imagination. There are billions of galaxies. Each galaxy has billions of stars. I mean, it's so vast, it blew your mind away. I mean, who are you to say there's no God? And how, how, can, the, how can all the stars, all the galaxies, all of their own orbit, own orbit, don't catch anybody? If, if the solar system, if sinking closer, it would be all dead. So there had to be somebody. Well, Einstein said there had to be God. There had to be God. Newton, Einstein, all the smartest scientists recognize that the universe is so cute, the cosmos is so cute. It's beyond human comprehension, beyond scientific investigation. We cannot, we, we do not have the methodology, we do not have an instrument to measure. The invisible. Yeah. Look, the dark matter is invisible. But some reality, quantum, quantum physics will, will tell you what we see as real is not real. real. Mm. It is a beyond observation. It's invisible. It's energy. The consciousness. So the idea that I only believe what I see, that's stupid. That's not rational. Mm. The fact is that. There's so many things beyond our comprehension. Yeah. We don't have to, to hold, hope, hopefully one day we can know more. But nobody can know the mystery of creation, the mystery of the universe. So the, 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 the most rational thing to do is that oh, there had to be God with superior intelligence yeah. controls everything. We call that God or call that higher. Higher power. The third reason I believe in God is that you, you can't face all the problems in life without believing in something bigger than yourself. In China, we believe in ancestor and we worship Buddha. The Buddha claimed he's never a God, but still, people pray Buddha and worship him. Down through history, all cultures believe in something. They believe in, in the sky, believe in fire, the fire god, the god of uh, uh, Lao Tian Ye, mm. uh, uh, sky god, the sky god. China always believe in you know, divine, it, something divine, mm. something sacred and divine that call us to worship and to trust. It's part of DNA. The believe in God is part of DNA. It's universal, the belief. Without that belief, how oh, you're so smart, so scientific, you pay for it, okay? Mm -hmm. So when you suffer problems that beyond control, when you face death, that beyond control, you, you can have emotional coping, try to Supply emotion, try to think about that. But to the best coping, mm. it's just religious coping is still the most powerful way for, for, for palliative care patient, for, for cancer, for, for cancer, from the cancer. So the, the, the existential uh, well being. It's often connected with spiritual well-being, they're connected. Mm. 
also for the people in their last stage of life, what brings them some comfort is this spiritual well being and eccentric well being that there's still meaning even in their last day. They can still find meaning and still find hope mm-hmm. in the last stretch of life. So that it's very hard to go through life without believing God. Mm-hmm. Your own mind, for your own mental health, you have to believe in something. As if God exists. You act as if God exists. It, that will help you to go through the horrors of life. Mm-hmm. They help you to maintain hope. What helped me to get to the worst part of my life is that God is watching me. God will get me through. God is with me. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's a huge, huge factor for all human survival. But the God, the church, I mean, right now the world is in a mess. Mm-hmm. The world is in a mess because people don't know the fear of God. They think they have their power to do anything. And children from rich and powerful parents, the more likely they, they, they become rotten children, if rotten human beings, because they think that, oh, like, you know what my father is? My father is so and so. They think that the fool I die, fool I die. And, uh, they, they're the second generation of rich people. All of them make a mess of their lives. And I think that uh, it's so true that um, I would say that maybe a few de- decades ago, once again, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the psychological researchers are uh, hesitant of mixing science and religion together, but we have ample and abundant research to show you know, the, the powers or the benefits of spirituality, spirituality or the belief in the supreme being or belief in God has so much benefit in terms of all areas of our well-being. And I think that what you have just shared, you know, personally, professionally, once again, just reinforce this fact that, as I said, that you know, uh, if there's no fear of God, there's power of the origins of the sufferings. Um, I, think, you know, I think the Bible also talks about the fear of God is also the beginning of wisdom. Yes, yeah. And when we talk about the fear of God, it's not like you know, we come to God, with, we, are, we are scared, we, we tremble, but it's more this reverent respect for him, acknowledging that he is the creator, that he's wiser, bigger, stronger than me. Yeah. He's a righteous God. He's a righteous God. Yes. It doesn't call nonsense. Doesn't call nonsense. Yeah. It doesn't call me us to do to, to what we want. Mm. They, they think they're going to do anything we want, they, they, they'll regret one day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Oh yes, um, I have one. Uh, uh, no, one last question it's for you. It's more at a personal level. You'll be like, and what's one thing that you have been doing this week, Paul, to look after your own well-being? Okay, this it's, it's more than one thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm first and first, the first thing I began with my day was spend at least one hour in prayer and meditation. Because I, to get renewal, I get uh, seek out direction. And uh, I cannot start my day without spending an hour praying to him and meditating on meditating God's word. So that gives me enough energy for the day. Mm. It's spiritual. The second thing is physical. I, I do my exercise. For example, I have. I have a low, lower back ache. Yeah. I will reduce my ache and my back ache. I do a core exercise. It mm. is hard. I on my leg. <laughs> uh, you know, it's hard work, but I do exercise to cure my pains. Okay? Mm. And I, I also do other some qigong. And, uh, so I learned from, from, from YouTube. Qigong and tai chi and the stretching. Yeah. So I do it after that day and night, uh, daytime and nighttime before going to bed. So that keep me, keep me uh, fit, even though I have all kinds of illness, right? Mm. I'm still fighting, uh, I'm still not out of the woods uh, in cancer, right? And so 
I took my spiritual, took my physical, mm-hmm. and and then I, after both of that, if I can do my work, right? My work consisting of seeing clients. Mm-hmm. I see one or two clients a day, and doing my writing, doing research. I, I have separate research partners, yeah. uh, you know, so that to build foundation uh, for my for my uh, psychology. So I believe that my work has value. So my work keep me keep me energized. Yeah. So my work, and then also uh, I also enjoy life. I also go go with my wife to a nice restaurant to eat. I was visiting. <laughs> so I live live a balanced life. This is one thing. Only one thing I've been in trouble, right? Yeah. I'm a spiritual. I look up to my physical. Look up to my meaningful work, and look at my relationship mm. with my family and friends. So it, the, the the key to life is the effort, it's a balancing act. You know, it's not just one thing; it's several things. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. All right. Well, I'm afraid that our time is up once again. I'm so grateful that you know you can join us today, Paul. And uh, of course, for our listeners out there, if you want to engage Paul's teaching expertise, either in existential positive psychology or in meaning, purpose, flourishing through suffering, you can reach him through drpaulwong.com. Okay, that is his website, drpaulwong.com. Um, before we finish our interview, Paul, any, um, I guess, that uh, further words we still want to share with our listeners out there? My, my last my, my parting shot is that trust God. That's the best thing I can do. The best thing I do myself is to become a Christian. That's the best thing I did to myself. It changed my life. Trust me. Okay, I'm a living proof that trusting God is a blessing. Yeah, it's indeed a blessing to have a blessed life, you know, that encompasses again joy, inner peace, also pain, sufferings. Mm-hmm. Courage and confidence. Thank you so much, Paul. Yes, thank you. You're the only, only person that I, that can talk about God freely. Thank you for the opportunity. No worries, Paul. And of course, thank you for watching. I'm a demon strong strength optimizer, and we're here to bring the best in you to optimize your strengths. Have a fantastic and fabulous day, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.